So today we are going to watch a video about density and how it relates to the unit for thermodynamics. Um, one of the things that we need to do in order to talk about density is to go back and review velocity. And velocity is a formula that we worked through last year or last unit where we talk th talked about things like driving 100 miles to visit your grandparents and it takes you two hours to get there. What was your velocity or speed? So we used the formula that said that velocity is equal to distance over time. So we took our distance, which was 100 miles, divided by our time, which was two hours, and we got our velocity, which was 50 miles per hour. And we got a unit that isn't measured, but it's a unit that we get through math. So if I asked you how to increase your velocity, and I said, and I said something like, you know, how do you increase your velocity um, if you want to go the same distance, but what do you have to do the time? Well, you would decrease the time. So if we went 100 hours, 100 miles in one hour, then we'd be going 100 miles an hour. And to if we were to increase our velocity, what would you have to do the distance to travel in the same amount of time? Well, we'd have to cover that distance in a faster amount, in, in more distance in that time. So we might say 150 miles in two hours, and that would get us a faster velocity. But we are kind of done with velocity at this point. You'll see it on the semester exam. Now, but now we're going to talk about a new unit, or a new formula rather, that we're going to call uh, density. And so density is defined as the amount of mass per unit of volume. And units for mass that you might come across would be things like, uh, let's see, grams, kilograms, and maybe, maybe even milligrams. And units for volume that you might come across would be uh, milliliters. Why is that being funny? Eesh. Wow. Milliliters, uh, the cubic centimeter, cm cubed, and the cubic meter, m cubed. Okay. And so there's a new formula that you're going to be used to using to after today, and that is the density formula. So that says that density is equal to mass over volume. Um, another way to write it would be D is equal to M over V. And the triangle of fun over here that we used for the velocity formula, we can use for density as well. So we have density, and we have mass, and we have volume. Okay. Now, if you didn't do this already, you may want to fill in all of these things in the notes. Like you might want to fill in the what the units for mass are, what the units for volume could be, maybe what the density formula is, but definitely fill in what the triangle of fun is because you're going to need that throughout the course of this unit. Uh, so we're going to go and do a couple of practice problems. So the first type of practice problem that you're going to come up with is asking you to simply calculate density. So here we are calculating density of a brick that has a mass of 200 or 2,500 grams and a volume of 980 cubic centimeters. So this problem is asking me to calculate the density when I know the mass is 2,500 grams and I know the volume is 980 cubic centimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my triangle of fun and I'm going to cover up density. When I cover up density, it tells me that I have mass divided by volume. So that's the formula that I'm going to use. Density is equal to mass over volume. So I'm going to plug in what I know, my substitution. So I'm going to take my mass, which was 2,500 grams. I'm going to take my volume, which was 900 80 centimeters cubed. And when I plug that into my calculator, I get a value for my density to be 2.55 grams 
per, per centimeter cubed. So if you haven't done so already, you might want to pause the video, copy all of this stuff down so you have an example to look at when you're doing your homework this afternoon or tonight. For practice problem number two, we are going to be looking at solving for mass because it says what is the mass of a sample of methanol if the volume of methanol is 40 milliliters and the density of methanol is 0.719 grams per milliliter. So I'm going to identify my variables by going ahead and taking 0 0.719 grams per milliliter and I have the volume which is 40 milliliters, and I'm looking for the mass. So in this problem, I'm going to cover up mass, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to see that density times volume is how I'm going to solve for mass. So I'm going to take mass is equal to density, oops, that's, that's not even a letter that I wanted, density times volume. So I'm going to set, substitute, it, substitute in my, my uh, values. So mass is equal to density, which is, in this case, 0 0.719 grams over or per milliliter times the volume, which in this case is 40 milliliters. Okay. So when I plug this into the calculator, the mass that I get for an answer is 28.76, and my unit milliliter cancels out, so it's 28.76 grams. So again, if you haven't done so already, you might want to pause the video, copy all of these things down, so you have an example from when you're doing your homework tonight. The other type of problem that you might come across is when you're asked to find volume um, in a problem. So this says, what is the volume of a ream of paper? So when you go to Office Max or Office Depot and you buy like printer paper, it comes in a big pack. That big pack is called a ream. So it says, what is the volume of a ream of paper if the mass is 23 or 2,300 grams and the density is 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter? So I'm gonna I'm gonna identify my variables as 0 0.8 um, grams per cubic centimeter. Um, I'm gonna find the mass to be 2,300 grams, and I'm looking for the volume. So over here I'm gonna cover volume, and I'm gonna see that the formula for volume is mass divided by density. So volume will be equal to mass divided by density. So I'm going to put substitute my values in. So volume will be equal to 2,300 grams divided by 0 0.8 grams per cubic centimeter. So when I plug this into the calculator, the calculator gives me a value of, uh, of um, let's see, volume to be 2,875 grams cancels out, and I'm left with cubic centimeters. So those are the three types of problems you're going to come across when homework tonight. But... There's some other things that we have to keep in mind, too, and some other things we maybe want to talk about. <clears throat> One of those things is that density is a relationship. And what I mean by that is that we know that all objects have mass and volume. And different objects of the same substance can have different masses and volumes at the same time. So over here, what I have is I have a block of cement that is a small block of cement, and I'm comparing it to a large block of cement. Okay. The other thing that I need to, that I can remember is that substances have density. So every substance on the face of the planet and even the universe can be can have a calculated density. And that density is unique to that particular type of substance. So cement, 
specific types of cement should all have the same density. And so no matter, no matter how much of it you have. And so in an effort to try to prove that, I'm going to do a calculation about these two different blocks. So if density is equal to mass over volume and density is equal to mass over volume. In the case of the first problem, density is going to be, the mass is going to be 300 grams. And in the case of the second problem, the mass is going to be 4,500 grams. So in the case of the first problem, the volume was 100 grams centimeters cubed. And in the case of the second problem, the volume was 1,500 centimeters cubed. So when I plug those values into my calculator, for the first problem, density gets a value of 3 grams per cubic centimeter. And in the case of the second problem, density also gets a value of 3 grams per cubic centimeter. And what I'm trying to illustrate here is that these two chunks of cement have the exact same density even though one is larger than the other. And that's an important thing to remember about density. So objects of the same substance will have the same density no matter how much of that substance you have. Now the last thing that we need to talk about today is differences in density. And so this diagram over here is designed to kind of illustrate some of these things. Now, substances that are more dense have either more stuff, so they either have more mass In the, same, in the same amount of space or the same amount of volume. Okay, so an example of that would be here is a substance that has more mass in the, than this substance, um, but this one is going to be more dense. Okay, they might have the same amount of, a same amount of mass. So another thing to think about is they, an object might have the same amount of mass but it might have less space. And that would be an example here. So in this example, I have less space, but I have the same amount of mass. Okay, And since I have less space and the same amount of mass, that means that this particular substance is going to be more dense. And then another thing that we need to remember is that substance could be less dense if they have less stuff, mass, in the same amount of space. So here's, a, here's an instance, same amount of space or volume. So over here is an instance where I have same amount of space, but I have less stuff, and that makes this guy less dense. Okay. Another way to look at it would be the same amount of stuff, so mass, in more space, um, volume. I don't really have a solid example going on over here, but I guess this guy and this guy have the same amount of mass but a different volume, so that would make this guy more dense. All right. So your homework is to complete the uh, density worksheet, which is attached to these notes. So once you've completed the notes, go ahead and fill out the worksheet and you'll be done for the day.